This is the best tour in Karan, Palawan. In a single day, we visited a total of seven remarkable destinations. We swam in stunning freshwater lakes and shallow coral reefs, relaxed on pristine white sand beaches, floated in enclosed blue lagoons, all while having monstrous limestone cliffs right at our fingertips. There's a certain hidden beauty confined within the mountainous walls on the edges of Koran Island that you can only see for yourself by boat tour like this one. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video where we'll give a full price breakdown so that you can budget for this day of adventure in your Koran itinerary. We hope that you'll be convinced that this excursion is as incredible as we say it is through the experience we had. It's not coined the super ultimate Quran tour for nothing. the Banka boat, which is a double outrigger dugout canoe, which is a native watercraft here in the Philippines, and we're so excited to be hitting seven different spots near Koron. We just made it to Kayangan Lake, which is arguably the most popular spot on this entire super ultimate tour here in Quran. Now, there is a bit of a trek to actually reach the lake. I believe it's about 300 steps. 367 steps. 367 steps. It's actually looking quite steep. We just reached the entrance. Let's head on up there and just see how amazing the views are. freshwater and 30% salt water. The water is super clear. You can see these little fishies and the rocks beneath you, but the most amazing part was actually the rock formations around us. Yeah, it absolutely surrounded us. It was towering over us. But the one caveat though is that Kayangan Lake is extremely busy. There is not a lot of space for you to put your stuff if you decide to bring a backpack or anything of the sort. But the views definitely make up for it. It was a joy just diving in that water, just floating around and enjoying the majestic views. And right now we are on top of our boat at Barracuda Lake, which is our second stop. Now Barracuda Lake is a little bit interesting because the part where you actually park your boat is not the lake itself. You actually need to take the ladder down and swim to the entrance where you'll walk a few set of stairs before you reach Barracuda Lake. So let's go over there and let's go and check it out.
cool. We managed to swim in some deep blue water and the limestone was right there. Then we made a quick stop at the coral garden. Now the coral gardens were really abundant, don't get me wrong, but the fish were not. And the water was quite choppy because of the wind, so it made the water a little bit murky. But right after that, we ended up stopping here at Beach 91 for lunch. And now we have three more stops to go. So for a little barbecue lunch, we have a pretty nice spread. So we got some rice, we got some glass noodles, chicken wings and chicken drumsticks, along with a, I believe a tuna fish, quite delicious, a little bit of shrimp, as well as there's some fresh fruit if you really want it. We're gonna dig in here because absolutely starving from the amount of lakes and the coral that we were just swimming in. So let's go ahead and dig in. Of course, that's stop number four. Jason pulls out the drone because when everybody else is in the water, he's gotta take flight and be in the air. If you guys saw our Oahu video where we went to Shark's Cove and I made fun of Jason's water shoes and then ended up cutting myself. I cut myself. <laughs> still have some blood on my sandals. I definitely regret making fun of Jason for wearing water shoes because I think water shoes would have been a good idea to bring on this trip. See? I got water shoes. Well, I've come to the conclusion that water shoes are a must, especially when you're doing tours like these because you're going to be hiking, you're going to be getting into the water, stepping on sharp rocks, stepping on stairs, and when you're in the water, it's so much better to be wearing something as flexible as this. All right, so we have Jason's water shoes. Very different style than mine. They're kind of like a croc, right? But better, he says. They allow you to get in the water, they allow you to hike, and apparently they're padded underneath. Jason cut his finger because this is what happens when you catch the drone instead of letting it land on its own. Okay, yeah, but to be fair, on these boats, you don't have that many great places to land them and the boat is moving. But yeah, no, this is 100% my fault. I was trying to catch it way too quick before letting it just come down. My mistake was not too bad. Just finished up snorkeling in our second coral area called Barin Sasayao. And the coral is not as abundant as what we saw at the coral garden, but Jason is able to pop up the drone and see quite a bit from the sky, which is really cool. donation area because if you lose something here you might not be able to find it back because it's the deepest part on our entire tour. This is what it looks like in the second lagoon. It's so peaceful. I came through underneath the rocks which is a really short dive but if you're not comfortable doing that you can go over the rocks by way of stairs which is right behind me and it's so incredibly quiet. I've never been in such a peaceful setting outdoors. The lagoon is so smooth and you're completely surrounded by these towering rocks. The 
the jagged limestone surrounding us in the quietness of the lagoon and the contrasting bright turquoise of the circular reefs against the deep blue waters made Twin Lagoon our favorite spot on the Super Ultimate Tour. So how much did everything cost? We booked our tour in advance before arriving to Quran at 1,990 Filipino pesos per person through a third-party company called Travel Palawan. But from what we saw, you could pay as little as 1,700 pesos. Depending on your accommodations, you can book directly through them using a credit card to save your cash. Hotel pickup and drop-off, a Filipino buffet lunch, and entrance fees are all included in the upfront cost of the shared tour. Snorkel gear rentals were an extra 150 pesos per set, and you can choose to add on a kayak rental for the whole day for 1,300 pesos for a regular kayak or 1,800 for a clear bottom. We didn't think it was worth it as there were in reality only two spots to kayak in, Twin Lagoon and Beach 91. You can also choose to rent a kayak for a quarter of the price upon arriving to Twin Lagoon if there are some available, but it's not guaranteed. We chose to swim instead and still very much enjoyed being in the water. And we only scratched the surface with our first day in Koron. We are so excited to be in this region of the Philippines. And we have so much more to show you guys in the next video.